Hello, YouTube. In today's video, we're going to take a look at some NAS boxes here. NAS, of course, standing for Network Test Storage. These are basically enclosures that contain hard disks that you can use to share your files on, do backups to, etc. So, I will be upgrading my Synology NAS, the one here on the right, which is a 215J, to this um, DS218 without the J. So this is a, a bit higher end model and of course a bit newer. The nomenclature that Synology uses is actually quite simple. DS, of course, standing for disk station. The 2 and 215 standing for the amount of drive base it has, which is 2. 15 standing for the year that it was built. In this case, this is a 2015 model. And the J means that this is, is the bottom of the barrel NAS. <laughs> That's basically how you can uh, understand what this is all about. You also have the play, which is optimized for media playback. And then there's the plus, which has faster processing. So it can just handle a bit more than the uh, other models can. They're also quite a bit more expensive. I think this is the best compromise between power and cost to being the regular DS218. And the reason I bought this 218, while well, I'm unboxing it by the way, is um, I've sort of started to really stream a lot more media than I thought I would. And uh, the 215J uh, can do 1080p video just about okay-ish. But it's uh, really not all that great of an experience. And uh, the future 4K content uh, being quite... Well, it's not actually future anymore, it's actually quite current now. I don't actually have any 4K content yet, but uh, you really need a bit more power to process that. So yeah, there's not a whole lot in here that we need to take out, I don't think. Some drive screws, a nice Ethernet cable, that's always good to have, and that is about it. So now that I'm consuming quite a bit more media that I play directly from, for instance, the Plex app or other media playback systems like Kodi, um, where the transcoding is usually just done on the NAS. Also, when you're trying to play from a mobile device, you're just transcoding from the NAS directly. You really need a little bit more CPU power than you uh, could otherwise get with the uh, Q15J. Right. So here they are side by side. Of course, the front is now off, but uh, that will go like right there. So they're quite similar in terms of design, especially if you uh, if you think the front on there, as you can see. There's also a bit of a difference, because on the front we now have a dedicated reset button on the 218. And we have a power button here. I would assume this is a provision for something like an SD card slot, but of course it's not on this one. Uh, of course, there are various indicator lights which are the same, just your LAN port, your disk ports, and the status LED for the overall system health. On the back, they are exactly the same, which is fun. I believe this is a 92mm fan, could be an 80 as well, I'm not quite sure actually. We fe feature gigabit ethernet on both of these models. The, the 215J has one USB 2.0, one USB 3.0 port. Here we have two USB 3 ports on the 218, and of course we have that USB port on the front here that is absent from the 215 as well. The drive cache design is a bit different. In this model you just take the front off and you can get access to your drives. The 215J is a bit different in that regard because you have to undo two screws and then pop the entire casing off. And then you get access to the drives. So this is a more clean design, I'd say. Let's see, open, there we go, we push it up and we pull the drive tray out. It appears to be a toolless design now. That's pretty sweet. That certainly wasn't the case with the 215, you just have to screw them all into place. And that's backwards. Excellent. Alright, fits into place nicely. Of course, this is all still plastic. I mean, it has a bit of a brushed metal look. 
That is uh, very definitely plastic, even though it looks a bit metal y. <laughs> oh well. Right, enough uh, chatter. Um, it's time to actually uh, get the drives transplanted from this one into this one. Ah, look at the lovely mess. So, the uh, DS215J is now completely torn apart. As you can see, we've got our two drive bays right here. And it is indeed an 80mm fan. This one is just a little bit dusty. It's actually not that bad. Considering I've been using this thing for a while. But, um, yeah, fairly simple unit. It served me very well. It's still a great thing. So, but uh, I was right, you have the option to uh, mount your drives toolessly, which is great. So all we really need to do is uh, put our drives back in. Of course I've made backups because we will, we will have to wipe the uh, DSM that's on this in order to reconfigure it for the new, uh, for the new NAS. So now I just need to... Right, that's the up position. Uh, we'll just put it in like so. Make sure our uh, screw holes are lining up. And then we should just be able to plug it in like so. Very simple system, gotta say. Alright, now we can just slide it in like so. There we go. Yep, I haven't actually used uh, this particular model of NAS before, so this is a learning experience for all of us, I guess. Okay. And now I just need to put on the last one. Make sure they're lined up properly. It hasn't snapped on the back yet. There we go. And now we just need to look at the arrow, which is pointing up, so it goes in this way. Okay, now both of the drives are in place. I'm not quite sure how they're envisioning that thing to stay on properly, but I guess that'll do. No, that's good enough. <laughs> that's more than good enough. Okay, so that's all the hardware done. Now we just need to hook it up and uh, make sure our data gets uh, transferred back over. All right, now we need to look for the NAS on a network, and we can do that by going to find.synology.com. This will now browse the network to see if it can find any disk stations, and. Uh, Let's see if it can. Yep, there it is. Okay. We actually have a migrate status available to us. That should be good. So let's connect and see if it will reconfigure itself so we don't actually have to migrate the data. It's always good to do it anyway. There we go. See, it can see that we are trying to migrate from a DS215J to a DS218. And this is actually what I want, so I don't have to copy uh, approximately 1.5 terabytes of data back and forth. Let's see. Yeah, I wanted to just do, do a direct migration. And let's go. It's claiming to be done in about 10 minutes. I'm not quite sure if that's actually realistic, but uh, we'll see. For now, it's just going to download the DSM image so we get the very latest Distation Manager software, which is still, by the way, uh, which still supports the DS212, I think, or at least the DS12 series from like 2012. Maybe even a 2011s. So Synology is very nice when it comes to uh, overall software support for your older NAS boxes. 
So yeah, I'm just going to let this run, and uh, once it's done, we can see if everything is still there. Alright, we're now at the login screen, exactly wh the way it was before I upgraded to the new NAS. So, let's log in, and take a look in there. Did I forget how to type or something? Or, Yep, apparently I did. Right, so we have 99 messages. Well, that's great. Okay. So apparently all of the apps are now bugged because it's a new NAS and it's not understanding anything about it. One thing we did gain though, we went from a 512 megabytes of RAM uh, dual core server to, or NAS rather, to a quad core with 2 gigs of RAM. So it should definitely not have as much uh, of a problem with just doing your everyday tasks. And it definitely should stream some video a little bit better. Alright, we'll let that repair. That's all fine and dandy. What I want is to go into the control panel and set my network. So I don't have to reconfigure anything. I'm lazy like that. Let's go to the LAN interface. Edit. I don't want DHCP, I want a static IP. This is the IP that I used before. Uh, that DNS server is fine. Don't need to adjust IPv6 because we're living in the dark ages where IPv6 is not mainstream yet. So I have no interest, that, interest in that uh, whatsoever. And now we just wait for a bit. now it's automatically switching back to the correct IP and logs us back in. Excellent. I don't want to use my ISP DNS service, so I'll adjust that as well. And there we have it. All of my shares are still there. Great. Okay, that's all good. It's all looking very nice. One thing I still need to check, I think, is in Storage Manager. The iSCSI LUN, yes, it's still there. Good. I stored my Documents folder of my uh, main PC on a uh, iSCSI LUN, so I can uh, back, up, back it up to the NAS and always keep the data on there, and then that goes on the backup drive later on. So that way I won't actually lose these files. Especially because there's a couple of uh, profiles in there that I use for a couple games, for instance Euro Truck Simulator 2 and American Truck Simulator, they don't use Steam Cloud. So once you uh, have to force format your hard drive and you didn't back up that data, your profile's gone and you have to start from square one. That has happened a little bit uh, too many times, I guess. It happened way too often. So uh, this is a good solution for that. But uh, from the looks of things, it appears to be working fine now. So uh, now it's just doing its repair. I just need to get uh, Plex Media Server back up and running. And uh, once everything is good there, then I can actually start uh, testing some media and see if the playback is any better. It probably is, but uh, yeah. I guess the old DS215J can now go online and... Uh, fetch some money so I can recoup some of the money I spent on upgrading to this NAS. It's not a big deal, but, you know, it's almost pretty cheap anyway. So I guess that really uh, concludes the upgrade from DS215J to my DS218. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.